Hi, I'm Beth from My Tutoring Bee, and in today's video, we are going over how to graph linear inequalities. I have a few examples for us, so let's go ahead and get started. Here we have our linear inequality, y is greater than negative 3x plus 2. And we're going to talk about how to graph that. So in a previous video that I have that I will link in the description below, I go over how to graph linear equations. So these are equations that have an equal sign, right? That's what makes them equations. And they're all in slope-intercept format. And that's what these are going to be as well in slope-intercept format. So the two main things that are new about this, we're going to graph it pretty much in the same way that we do equations, but there are two differences. One difference is the line. When we don't have that line underneath the inequality symbol that tells us or equal to, then we are going to use a dashed or a dotted line. So this is just a broken line to represent that that line does not equal whatever the solutions are for that inequality. That is just the boundary for those solutions for that inequality. If it does have that line underneath the inequality, the less than or the greater than symbol, we're going to use a solid line. So this one is actually going to look very similar to what we typically do when we are graphing equations. The other part that we're going to do that is new is shading. So a lot of times when I'm working with students on this skill, they tend to think that I need to shade either to the left or the right of the line. And what I really want you to think about is shading up or down. All right, we're going to start off in the similar fashion with, as we do with equations, we're going to look at the y-intercept. So in this case, it's plus two, positive two. So we're gonna locate positive two on our y-axis and go ahead and put a point there. Now the next step is to move over to the slope. Our slope is a negative integer. We want it in fraction form so that we can figure out what the rise over run is. So we've got negative 3 over positive 1. So that means we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and then over to the right 1. And we can make a few of those points. Keep going down 3, over to the right 1, down 3, right 1. And we can go the opposite direction in the opposite way. So that means we can go up 3 and to the left 1, up 3, and to the left one. And as you can see, those points are still in line. Oh, see, I went up just a little too high on that one. One, two, three, up three to the left one. And I could tell that one was out of place because it wasn't perfectly in line with those other points that I've already put on the graph. So now because we have a greater than symbol and not the line underneath that tells us equal to, we are going to use this dashed line. So I'm gonna do my best here on the computer screen to make a straight dashed line. We still are gonna go all the way off of the graph and put those arrowheads on each end of the graph to show that that line continues going in each direction. Now, again, this dashed line means that any of these solutions, any of these points along this line are not actually solutions to this inequality. Let's talk about shading before we get into that. So we've got y is greater than all the rest of this. So again, we're thinking, are we going, here's our y-intercept, are we going up or are we going down? Which y values, we're just looking at that one line, which y values are greater than this point at two? All of these are greater, right? Y is greater than the rest of this, so we are going to be shading up. And so now that we know which side of the line that we're going on, we can go ahead and shade in all of this. Now, when students are working on their papers with pencil and paper, just do a quick little squiggly line to show that that is the side that you are shading. All right, let's do some test points. I'm gonna pick three points. I'm gonna pick a point that is here inside the shaded area. I'm gonna pick a point that is here right on the line, and I'm gonna pick a point that is not in the shaded area. So we picked four, six, we picked negative one, five, and negative five, negative five. All right, and then let me show you how to test those out to see, make sure that we have everything correct. So four, six, that one should be a solution to this inequality. So let's substitute this in. This is our y coordinate, this is our x coordinate. So the y, we're gonna sub in six, negative three, and for the x coordinate, we're gonna sub in four. 
All right, let's go ahead and solve that. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus 2. Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. And this statement is true. 6 is greater than negative 10, so we know that this point we have shaded in the correct direction. Let's go ahead and uh, substitute in the point negative 1, 5. So again, here's our y, here's our x. So y is 5 is greater than negative 3. And notice I'm just using the, the exact um, original equation. Sorry, not equation, inequality. So then let's just solve. And notice I'm just solving over on the right-hand side and comparing it to 5. We want to see if 5 is truly greater than whatever we have over here on the right-hand side. So 5 is greater than negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And then 5 is greater than 5. Well, that's not exactly true, right? So that is why this dotted or dashed line is the boundary. It's what all of the solutions go up to, but it doesn't include any of those points on that line. So that's what the dashed line represents, is that this is a boundary, not actual solutions to this inequality. Let's go ahead and check our negative 5, negative 5. So we've got negative 5 is greater than negative 3 times negative 5 plus 2. Negative 5 is greater than negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. And then we've got negative 5 is greater than 15 plus 2 is 17. Obviously that is not correct also, which makes sense because this point is not in our solution set. So this is not a solution to this inequality. So another way to think about this is that this shaded region contains all of the points that are solutions to this inequality. If you chose any of these points in this shaded region and substituted them in for y and x, you should get a true inequality statement. Let's do another example. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this one. We've got negative one for our y-intercept. We've got four over one for our slope, one, two, three, four, and over one. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, and then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Okay, we do have that uh, line underneath, so I'm going to use a solid line for my graph because it could be equal to. And especially when we have graphs like this that are very, that have a very steep slope, this is when students tend to think, do I shade to the left or do I shade to the right? but we're still wanting to think, do I shade up or down from that y-intercept? So since y is less than or equal to the rest of it, we are shading down. So that means all of this should be shaded. Okay, and again, just to save some time on the video, I went ahead and picked some points, one not shaded, one shaded, one on the line, and substituted those in so you can see the point that's on the line as well as the point within the shaded area. Those are both correct statements, and this one would be incorrect. So we know we shaded the right way. I just have two more examples for us. These last two are going to be a little bit different than our typical slope-intercept form, so I wanted to make sure to include them. They should be pretty quick. So let's go ahead and graph these. Here we just have y is greater than negative 4. So there's no x involved. So that means that this is the y-intercept at negative 4. And since we don't have a slope, or I should say our slope is 0, that means we have a horizontal line. And we don't have that line underneath our inequality symbol, so it's going to be a dashed line. So I'm going to go ahead and write that dashed line in. So it is going horizontally across at negative 4, where y equals negative 4. All right, and then our shading, we would shade up above. y is greater than negative 4, so all of these y values higher than negative 4 are going to be in our solution set. And then when we look at our test points, I picked out, again, three test points here. We don't have an x in our original inequality, so we're not going to substitute in the x-coordinate from each of these points. We can only use the y-coordinate. So here for this one, 0 is greater than negative 4. That one checks out. In this one, negative 4 is greater than negative 4. Not quite. It's equal, but 
we know that since that is on the dashed line, that one's not going to work out. And then of course, negative six out here in the unshaded area is not greater than negative four. So those are both out. This is the only one that we've chosen that's part of the solution set. But again, any of these points that are in this shaded area are part of the solution set. And for our last problem, we're going to graph x is less than or equal to seven. So again, this isn't the typical slope intercept format. We just have x, y isn't involved at all. So much like we did with the y intercept where we had that horizontal line, in this one, the x axis is the one that has an intercept. And then our line is actually going to be vertical, straight up and down. Since we do have that line there underneath, we are going to use a solid line. So we're just gonna go straight up and straight down from this intercept at uh, x equals seven. And then our shading. Now this one is the exception to the rule where you are gonna shade to the left or the right because now we're comparing to the x values. So we're saying that x is the one that is less than or equal to seven. We're not looking at the y values really at all for this particular one. So since x is less than or equal to seven, we're gonna shade all of this area over here to the left. And again, with those test points, we are only able to substitute in the X coordinate for these since we don't have a Y in this inequality at all. And let's check out what we've got. We've got seven, seven here. So seven is less than or equal to seven because we have that or equal to part. That's what make this, makes this one true. We've got negative four is less than or equal to seven. That's also true, which checks out because that's in the shaded area. And then this one outside of the shaded area, nine is not less than or equal to seven, so that one would be incorrect. I hope that this video was helpful for you in learning about graphing linear equalities. Please take a look at the links in the description below. As I've said, I've got a ton of links to other videos that might help you with some of these skills, as well as a link to my entire pre-algebra series, which this video is a part of. I go over a ton of different topics that you would see in a typical pre-algebra class. So check that out. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. That does help me to continue making these videos for you. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought, and I'll see you next time.